and welcome to the 10th episode of uh, the Mountain Ground Podcast. Uh, going into the double figures now. Anyway, this morning we'll be talking the art of fast packing. So it's myself, Nicolette and Peter from Gegrond. And this topic kind of came up with Nicolette doing a really cool trip um, over the last weekend. So we just really want to talk about how do we all define fast packing and what it, you know, how we objectified in the mountains. So dig in, have your coffee and um, listen up. And first of all, it will be Nicolette going over, telling us a bit about her trip. And then myself and Peter will also chip in with our opinions about fast packing and the way we like to do it and what we like to incorporate when we go out into the mountains. Yeah, morning guys. Um, thanks for joining us. So I was very privileged this past weekend to um, be asked to guide somebody, an athlete actually of ours, on a, a Drakensberg mission. And he's interested in doing the DGT run. So his purpose was primarily to be out on the route and navigate some of the trail that's relevant for that DGT, the Drakensberg Grand Traverse race, coming up in November. But he also wanted to get some good training in for his upcoming race in Wales, the Dragon's Back. So uh, multi-day stage race, a lot of elevation, long days, 50 kilometers plus. Um, and he was keen to get into the mountains and just do some last training for that. So um, then, yeah, his potential partner for the DGT run actually joined us as well. It was good for them to just see, you know, would they be a good team? Um, can they move well together? Are they a similar pace? And she joined on the trip and we went, we started from Cathedral Peak Hotel. Packs were about 35 to 40 liters in size and weighed between 8 and 12 kilograms, I would estimate. I think mine was 10 kilograms. And yeah, we, we started Friday afternoon at about 3 o'clock and we headed up the Camel Pass um, in the central berg. From there, we headed south through the Yodlers Valley and made our way to Dedima. So the first day was only 25 kilometers, but starting quite late, that put us well into the night. And we only got to the cave at about half past 11. And yeah, it was the forecast for the weekend was looking a bit dire, to be honest. Um, there was high speed winds, very low temperatures. But the first day was amazing. I must say it was calm, it was clear, it was actually quite warm. Um, and the wind only picked up on the second day. And then we got up nice and early on day two, the Saturday, and made our way to Champagne Castle, Mafadi Peak, and then ended off at Giants. That was a 52 kilometer day, so it was quite big. And, you know, we, we mostly hiked. Um, and I suppose this will come in shortly about, you know, what is fast packing? Should you be running? Should you be hiking? What is your speed? How heavy is your bag? Um, but these are all factors to... Um, account for if you are interested in a fast packing trip and then the last day sorry I'll just round off the last day we were supposed to tag Giants Peak itself but the weather had really pulled in so we woke up to a frigid wind um, it was trying to blow us off the mountain so we we conceded and we went straight down Giants Pass and ended off at Giants Camp and so that totaled our weekend at about 90 kilometers um, yeah but some epic winter views um and caves up there well, well done on uh getting to the cave in the dark uh, i remember a very very clear memory of probably five five six years ago when me and louis thought we were well experienced navigators and we would be able to find the cave in the dark and we also started at cathedral peak we never got the cave we did end up in a very luxurious room at two o'clock in the morning at the hotel, but uh, <laughs> we never found the cave. <laughs> so um, mm. that yeah, must have tricky. been. <laughs> I guess that's one of the things about fast packing is you look at all the different options of bags. Now that I think is a technical thing that we can definitely dive into. You know, what's the difference between, say, a fast pack and using a normal backpack? Um, and then obviously, part of that is the volume that you can actually run with effectively. Um, a lot of these fast packs, it seems, starts at about 20 liters 
um, and then you get the odd 40 liters pack like that um, ultimate direction which <laughs> ironically I just ordered and I can't wait to receive <laughs> so um, oh, that's cool <laughs> Yeah, I really look forward to it. I actually found Pierre on that and I gave him like the list of options and we had a long discussion on it. I think uh, both of us enjoy enjoy debating the pros and cons of each bag. Um, so firstly, what like what would be a general acceptable volume that you can actually do fast packing with? And, um, you know, in your instance, what pack did you eventually end up taking um, on that route? Okay, I'll jump in here quickly. Um, just, yeah, for me, always before I get a bag or get a, you know, I would see, like, try to fi figure out what's my objective. Um, you know, because I guess a, a typical trail runner will say fast packing is, well, I've heard someone say once before, it's just moving slower. So they take their race vest and they go hiking for the day and they call it fast packing. <laughs> or they take a 10 liter or a 15 liter more backpack style and they call it fast packing. And then a hiker that's used to a 75 liter pack, well, they take a 60 liter or a 50 liter pack and then they just move faster than usual and they call it fast packing. So it's, a, it's very open for interpretation where I guess myself and Nicolette, the first time we went into the Berg, we kind of just did fast packing, I guess, without, you know, defining it. Because we took a, each had a 20 liter pack and uh, we just shuffled as much clothes in there as we could. And it was middle of winter as well. And we, you know, did quite a big route out in the Berg, slept up there as well and shivered the whole night. And um, as, you know, we progressed, we just defined more like what to what what's our objective when we go and then our packs will vary so we've gone from like a 15 liter pack all the way through to a 35 liter pack mm -hmm. i don't like going bigger than 35 liters because then then you losing the for me the biggest luxury of fast packing is the freedom of pace you don't have too much slowing you down basically but you have you don't have the comforts that you have with hiking um so that's why I like a 25 to 30 ish liter pack because bigger, like I said, bigger than 30, 35, then you can just, you can take too much and then you do struggle to move efficiently and fast. But obviously if I just have to do a 20 K day sleep over and a 20 K day, then it's, you know, you have the whole day and you can move slower. You can hike it out the whole day. So if you do want to run, it's always difficult with the designs out there, there are some packs that's got vests. That's like the ultimate direction. It's a full vest type where our Salomon bags that we actually use for, we've got that all night. It's a 30 plus five liter pack. Um, that's got the hip belts and it is comfortable ish. If you run with it, like myself and Nicolette do run with it, but mostly it's a very fast hike. Um, especially in the Berg where, you know, like what Nicolette didn't say about their two days, like the first day was 25 Ks, but it also had 2,600 meters of climbing. Um, so it does make, you know, you don't want to be packing too heavy and the size of your pack definitely affects that because, well, the bigger your pack, you will fill it up, especially in winter where, you know, they had, I was checking the weather as they were going, cause I was down in the Cape and as the cold front hit in the week there they were on the then i knew like the weekend is going to be cold up in the berg <laughs> and i checked when they were summiting uh champagne like the winds was like it was like 70 kilometers an hour and uh mm -hmm. you know mountain forecast had the um the freezing level at like 2000 meters and you know champagne as well above 3300 meters and it's the feels like temperature i guess was dropping to like minus 12 so yeah it's dry which helps so you don't have to have like you know, you're not going to be wet and um, cold as well. But yeah, she'll tell you about the snow conditions and we'll post some cool photos about it. And it was just really, you know, to, keen to see what she also packed when I came back. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, what gear did you use and what kind of packs did you use? Mm. And it's interesting to see the fruit because obviously you have to then compromise somewhere. You know, you can't. You know, if you want to take your nice warm gloves and an inner glove and another gloves, then you can't, you may, may not have place for a, you know, aero press. So now you're compromising because <laughs> now you might have to drink like sachet coffee, <laughs> you know, and especially, um, and the preparation that goes into it. So I guess, you know, fast packing gets defined by the individual mm. and, um, 
it is yeah it is a fascinating topic like you say like the conversations we've had about different packs and the one the bag that might work for you might not work for the other and if i've got a really good sleeping bag that's you know 600 grams but can go to minus 10 well i can go with a smaller bag than someone that's got a sleeping bag that's 1.2 kilograms and you know sufficiently warm so that's the big thing it's like also your gear also affects the size of bag you can carry which then affects your pace and mm. then you know your targets that you can hit so mm. that's kind of like my opinion on it um but yeah, i know you've got a lot of because i know you use that black diamond distance 15 bag as well and some other bags so i'd keen to hear like your take on it and what you how you kind of what's what's your priorities when you go fast packing <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think it's like you say it. It the challenge is always you know, um, especially for someone less experienced than me. Um, you know, well, not less experienced, someone <laughs> with as little experience as myself in in terms of going with the bare minimum into the into the berg. Um, I remember for that specific trip that me and Louis did, we had we had this Solomon Peak. S Lab uh, Peak 20, which I thought was an exceptionally good designed pack, but sadly I can't really find it uh, at the moment for Shell. But we just found the 20 liters to be always a little bit on the on the light side because we eventually one of the reasons why we needed to come back is we never packed the tent, <laughs> so we never had really we never really had enough space to to pack a tent and. Um, you know, so when when I looked at the pack, there's a few things that I looked at. So, firstly, um, what I what I also f understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when it comes to this fast packing backpacks, you almost like want a bit of a flexible back. So when you run, you're basically twisting your body. So if your intention is to maybe do a bit of running, which as far as I'm concerned, f my definition of fast packing is I like the uphills, and when it's flat and a little bit um how can we put it you just want to get a section done with then you can do a little bit of a jog so it's basically well what i find to be the benefit of fast packing is on the sections which are a bit more runnable and perhaps a section that you know you almost like want to get to the good stuff which which i enjoy the climbing and getting to the top of the mountain i can just you know run those flat sections and then you know, hike the uphill. So that so that's really the benefit for me of a fast pack is is that I can do a lot of more distance by making use of the flats to get a little bit of a jog in. And then again, like when when these packs, what I also found was if you pack too much volume, and this is the balance, it the, you know the pack seems to bounce quite a bit. Um, and you know, I think that's <laughs> that's really the challenge is getting to that sweet spot where you. You have enough gear that you're comfortable with um, for the, especially the terrain. I mean, you can let like, you know, going to the Jorgensburg, those, the weather can vary quite substantially. So, you know, it's really, I look forward to hear what exactly it is that you've, that you packed in and, you know, what you would consider the safe bare minimum for going into a, a remote place like the Berg. Um, but yeah, that that's one thing that I always think about is, trying to keep the volume to such an extent that the pack doesn't bounce as much and that might come down to a bit of design as well um what pack you're going to use and then also having packed enough that i am comfortable that you know when things go wrong i'm still safe and that's you know one of the one of the aspects that i thought of maybe instead of a tent maybe when you fast back take the bivy bag which is has always been a very you know, that's always been one of those buys where you have a tent, but you really want a bivy back, but you haven't really justified getting a bivy back. And then you're thinking fast back and saying, well, this is a great opportunity. <laughs> this is a great opportunity to maybe look into the bivy bag option. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what, what I look at. Um, what I would definitely, and I, I just want to make an ear note of this for later, is the hip belt. Because obviously when you're hiking, the weight generally goes and sits on your hips uh, where with the fast packing at least the practice that i've looked at most of the weight still remains on your shoulders and you know your upper body um with the option of the hip, hip, uh, hip belt um so yeah i think if we can 
get some thoughts in terms of what you guys firstly yeah what what do you define as fast packing like what what does that actually mean to you guys and then also how do you find the balance between packing safely being effective um in terms of running and then you know what what gear would you recommend yeah so i i do agree with your definition of fast packing there and i think that's quite the ideal um your pack would be the correct weight and size that you would hike the the climbs and then you can run the flats and the descents um but like i say that that's a little bit idealistic i mean for me fast packing in a more realistic sense i suppose it's everything in between trail running and hiking um and and that you have to just allow you know for different people's level of fitness the bag they have access to, the conditions on the mountain, they the route that they choose. For example, if we were doing a, a low felt fast packing trip, we could get away with in summer, we could get away with a 15 liter bag. Um, it's going to be warm. There's plenty of water en route. Maybe we just need a mosquito net, <laughs> not much else. Um, and then it's, you know, relatively flat. So you can run almost everything. Whereas this trip we just did now in winter in the berg with all that elevation having to carry warm gear sleeping systems the ability to make hot drinks which is in on the one hand it's a luxury but on the other hand it's also a safety precaution because if you you know if someone becomes hypothermic and you have nothing to make hot water give them a hot drink and heat them up like no artificial heat source then it can also be a safety risk so and then taking into consideration the fitness levels of the people on the group in this case you know we just you know not everyone was conditioned to run with 10 kilograms on their back even when it was downhill or flat they could have maybe done it for a short period but would it have been sustainable for you know three days 50 kilometers and that's i suppose where the um yeah you you have to um what's the word compensate um and unfortunately on this trip we just we hiked mostly but we were hiking much faster than someone with a 70 kilogram um, or 70 liter backpack so we still fast packed we still moved much quicker than your average hiker and we covered a much bigger distance and we in so doing so we were able to see a vast section of the mountain basically the whole central berg on the escarpment um so yeah that's kind of my idea of fast packing and then obviously I've already kind of like given my brief on how I define or see fast packing as, but then just to touch on what you've said there about packing a bag that's not too heavy so that you cannot move well, but you want to be comfortable and a big part of comfortable is feeling safe as well. So now do you take a tent? Do you not take a tent? And I guess that we usually don't take a tent because we make use of caves and, um, Caves, it can be very tricky to find. As you've stated earlier, you and Louis ended up in a very luxurious uh, Cathedral Peak <laughs> Hotel cave. <laughs> but, you know, we have spent, you know, we've spent one one night, we've spent more than an hour looking for a cave. And it's not fun, you know, but we found the cave, got in. So obviously when we take clients out, we go to caves that we know that we've been to. Um, and then we, we go out alone. Obviously, you know, we explore a bit more and, you know, obviously your appetite for risk changes so for me that is a big thing and then with that comes what are we packing um so yeah we always take a bivy bag out so i've got a soul escape um that's a survive outdoors longer um escape so it's a really lightweight bivy bag kind of got it for adventure racing initially because it weighs like you know they usually say you know 155 grams is minimum and mine weighs 156 um, grams so it's perfect (laughs) for racing but then as a safety precaution i will double up by taking a rad bag as well which weighs a bit more but it's much thicker and um, it is warmer although i don't anticipate in sleeping out in the open in it um, in the cave it also helps Um, and then Sleeping bags, obviously, you know, what you can get your hands on and what's good enough. Obviously, if you can get in from the, from Europe, they do have much lighter bags that can, you know, go much to a, to a much lower temperature. Um, so that's why I double my sleeping bag up with a inner liner as well. 
So that's kind of like my and then a, a sleeping pad because the sleeping pad helps a lot to just get you off the ground, mm. um, and that you know that just helps a lot. So obviously now you can see the bags are already kind of filling up. So even if on a three day trip or a six day trip that we do like i don't take extra clothes for like moving i just move in the same clothes kind of every day because unfortunately you know you just don't have the space then to take more and then for us the jet boil has really become quite almost revolutionary because <laughs> from a it's it's very light your fuel system it works really well at altitude and at cold as well in the cold you need to really figure out you need to make sure you use the right form of fuel um, because not everything burns properly up there. Like basically a propane butane mixture w won't burn as well as say the jet fuel from Jetboil the um, and the MSR and the Iger Sun brand. Those three I can say will burn properly nice. At, it's an isobutane mixture. So it burns more equally. It burns hotter. And you know if it's minus 10 in a cave at 3,400 meters it's going to give you a good burn still where some others have really, yeah, you just get this little limp flame and nothing's heating up. <laughs> and then the jet boil obviously is quite, um, uh. it's quite light as well. So that's been really a nice system that we've added onto, you know, in our packs. And obviously only the one, only one person has to carry it if there's three. So that's a big thing as well to actually share your gear um don't let one person just carry the burden or don't double up there's no point if you three or four people there's almost no point in having two cooking systems you know you can actually share it in between the four of you or the three of you um so yeah it's just to be aware of who's with you how can you share because you really have to be as efficient as possible so that's always when i take people out into the mountains for say a more specific trip you know because nicolette and them they did 90ks over three days so that's by no means a, a hike, you know, and um, to have a Zoom chat with people beforehand to just say, okay, guys, this is our objective. How can we as a team move as efficiently as possible? And how are we going to share the weight? How are we going to help each other as a team to do it? Because the more, I guess, uh, you know, the more, the, the bigger your objective becomes, the more you have to work as a team where if everyone's got a 70 liter backpack, you know, and you're going to only do 15 Ks or 20 Ks a day, it's much easier to just pack all the comforts you want. You know, it's then I pack books, I pack tents, I, <laughs> you know, it's, I pack my Bialetti, my mocha pot, <laughs> uh, grinder for mm. my coffee. Uh, so it changes a lot. Um, so yeah, that's our big stuff that I take into consideration with regards to like a fast packing trip specifically. And that's why it excites me so much. It's that intricacy is that the way me and you can talk about, you know, for half hour, we can talk about the different kind of packs, you know, mm. um, will I sacrifice a bit of comfort to like not say have a hip belt because now I want to run. Um, the hip belt for me with a fast pack is more about stability because a lot of times, so as a hiking pack, the hip belt yeah, sits on your, the weight, a lot of the weight sits on your shoulder, on your hips. With the fast pack, obviously, it's more of a, just a, a race vest backpack style. So it's, a lot of it's on your, your back slash chest, you know, around your body. And the hip belt for me just stops it from, you know, if the bag is too long and too big, obviously it's going to move a lot at the back. So the hip belt kind of just stabilizes it at the bottom. So you'll see, it's so like uh, Filippo used that Ultimate Direction All Mountain Pack, which is a 40 liter. And it's kind of like the typical bullet shaped design. And uh, it doesn't actually have a hip belt it just has a little like a i guess it's a belt but not this typical kind of hiking style around your hips mm. it's just actually something very lightweight that goes around your stomach to keep the bottom of the bag from you know obviously going left right as you when you do run um, I, i'm still waiting for that perfect race vest design like that salomon peak 22 liter mm. but in a call it a 28 ish liter 25 to 30 liter that would be you know that would be the ideal i'd say yeah i i must say that um it's obviously i guess Rena gave some inputs on that bag but you know just the weight distribution on the shoulders of that bag was you know that was really the the golden nugget what personally i found that that pack to be really good at is that i understood on a long, fast packing trip, you want that weight distributed more evenly across your, your shoulders where some of the other packs out there, I think it, it, it doesn't do the same justice. 
you know <laughs> and I, I like i said i've looked for that pack and it's been discontinued and i've been searching for it and then eventually i gave up on my my search and then um i uh, i went with alternative which was back then it was that black diamond uh distance that 50 liter but it's just too small and i can't wait to get my hands on this new ultimate direction pack now because um yeah, I've, I have been hearing good things about it. Uh, it seems to be quite a rigid pack, um, although, you know, we'll, we'll see the proof is in the pudding. Um, I just need to be realistic in terms of if I'm going to pack 40 liters of luxuries, you know, the coffee grinder, all the rest of the things is probably, <laughs> I think it's just managing that the expectations that, you know, it, 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 it probably is not built for like a high, you know, volume type of, um, and, you know, I um a big amount of of mass <laughs> weight. <laughs> Let's just say weight. So, um, so, so what's your what's your first trip planned for the the new pack when it arrives? So, so there's a few. Um, when when I had a chat with Pierre, I said, look, I need a pack that almost can do everything. I want to be able to go and backpack in Europe and just like have a bit of a walk around and you know it fits in the cabin and i'm going to do some bike packing so i want almost like one solution for everything got the pack and now i i look forward to doing something called the wickler round so the wickler round so each country has different rounds which is, uh, it basically the principle is that within 24 hours how many peaks can you tag and then get to the same place so there's a there's a wickler round here in ireland which you actually need to self-navigate um but you know <laughs> people will yeah, that <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> people will uh will probably just give it out to me that I'm not the best that when it comes to navigation. I just choose straight lines and sometimes it ends up where we want to be and other times not. So I'm just gonna like navigate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to use my GPS and phone and just do the round for the for the fun of it, maybe over two days and see how, how things go. And I, I really look forward to that. Um so and I mean I've yeah so so that will be my first trip. Hopefully, I I can get that squeezed in before the winter arrives here in Ireland. Which, looking at the weather today, <laughs> it's coming. Winter is coming. So, <laughs> you know, so um, so yeah. Um, I actually dropped in this chat. People won't be able to see, but you can have a look there at me and 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 Louis. I mean that's the. You know, that's the great thing, like when we started this file fast packing thing, um, <laughs> that's what we packed basically for all day. You can see we we basically packed everything um, except the tent. <laughs> so we packed literally, I think we had so many luxuries in there. But the one most important thing was probably is the tent. And that's the one thing that we forgot. Um, not forgot, but which we said, look, we, we don't really have space for, which is ironic because we were just, doing a one day fast packing trip <laughs> so, so it's, uh, i'm glad to say things have changed now um but but yeah um i mean i'm glad we had this discussion today before i go on this fast packing trip um because it does seem there's a lot of like actually brands driving this fast packing initiative and really doing a lot of good development in the fast packing space you know i think a few years ago you really couldn't find too many options. I know Ultimate Direction has always been there with their fast pack, um, but you know it's 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 not really something that was as I guess well known. And there seems to be a bit of a push now towards the fast packing or a trend towards the fast packing, which is great to see because you know there is some benef there is a lot of benefits on this fast packing, and it's quite exciting. You know, like to think that you're going to go with a lot less. You're going to do a lot more distance and, you know, um, it is exciting. Like that's always my fascination is like, I want to do as much as possible with as little as possible. And the best way to do that is to improve your skills. It's not just to get better gear, actually. So mm. obviously, if you can navigate better, <laughs> you're going to be, you know, more accurate and you're going to mm. slice off an hour or two of your time. And then if you are fitter, you can move up, you know, you're not going to say move at five kilometers an hour. You could possibly move at five and a half kilometers an hour, which then assists you in you know, achieving your objective. And then, yes, the gear, because the gear is much, is, is quite a lot, it's, it's comfort. Um, where if you have a, you know, not the greatest bag, 
and you load everything in, you're just going to have to endure and not complain about, you know, the discomfort. But then now it's great. Yeah. Now, so the gear brands are really catching up and <clears throat> Black Diamond is, uh, I, I really like that distance series of theirs. Would be nice if a 20 ish liter in that style design also comes out. Um, cause that 15 liter is, it's much bigger than, cause that's also with some packs that I've experienced, you know, they claim it's a 25 and then you use another bag that's also a 25 and it's just completely different. The volume that, you know, the amount of stuff you can fit in there. So that's also worth looking at is actually to look at the bag, maybe take like a dry bag with, with a lot of stuff in it and fit it into the bag and actually see what is the capacity of this bag. I know that black diamond bag, I've seen people put half ropes, helmets, climbing shoes, everything in that bag. <laughs> and it's like, wow, this takes a lot. Um, and I've got two different 25 liter packs at home and in the one I can load up quite, you know, quite significantly, which I then regret when I'm out on the mountain because now I've got <laughs> a very heavy bag. And the other one is, you know, also apparently a 25 and that it just doesn't take that much. Mm -hmm. So it's always something to be cognizant of. And then just more on the brands. I know in Europe, a lot of, so the one, you know, I listened to a chat, uh, a Scarpa chat the other day about their approach shoes and how they're going into the middle between, yes, between running and hiking and mountaineering kind of, and they're calling it fast hiking. So they're designing a shoe that's more specific to fast hiking. So I think that's pretty much the same as what we now talking about as fast packing. Um, so it's just like a hiking shoe that's hybrid between that and a trail runner. So it's heavier, more durable than a trail running shoe. And you know, so now it gives a bit more cushioning as well because you're gonna maybe strike differently when you hike, but it's not your old school heavyweight hiking boot. Mm. So yeah, definitely the brands are coming out with really cool you know, developments. And it just makes our life, because if you look at all the, you know, how mountaineering has gone into alpinism and you know, even the climbers are climbing with less gear, you know, hikers are going with lighter packs and, you know, the whole drive of society at the moment is to do more with less and the better the gear becomes, the more it allows us to do that in a safe manner because you also don't want to just be silly and go out there and, you know, really, <laughs> really put yourself at risk for not taking a lot. And that's nice of this DGT run, the race coming up now as well. It's like, what do you decide to take? You know, if you are going to sleep out in the open in November, I wouldn't be happy with just a bivy because, you know, if it rains, well, you know, that's it. You're not going to sleep um, unless you can find a cave or otherwise you might have to sleep in daytime when it's a bit warmer. But if you say doing a hundred hour DGT, I definitely just go for a very lightweight tent. You can get a two person tent for like two to 2.1 kilograms. And if you share that between the two of you, you know, that little extra weight that you're carrying can, cause that's like, between the two of you will be like say 300 grams extra per person that you're going to have to carry um, if you split the tent up efficiently. And that's just going to be the difference between you might have to come off the mountain and quit, or you can stay on the mountain, get it in the, the tent, sort yourself out, get dry, cook a meal and sleep for say three, four hours of quality sleep, and then just go at it again. Mm -hmm. Where sometimes going light and fast can really, you know, you need, there's always consequences and that's why i love moving in the mountains because every decision you make has got consequences and only you and your partner or you alone or you and your team will have to live and survive those consequences and um yeah that's a that's something that's not really always you know present in our daily lives is it's a you know we can be very comfortable sometimes just moving <laughs> around you know if you you know, if your car breaks, okay, cool, I'll get an Uber, you know, <laughs> it's, mm. there's always something, there's always a backup for everything. And when you're in the mountains, especially remote mountains, like the Drakensberg, it, um, it really makes you think about your, your choices. And then you have to go live those choices out there. You know, that's a, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and yeah, so the, just on that, you, you mentioned, obviously, this, this, design and how there's a bit of a hybrid coming in terms of the shoes um a final question on the fast packing that i think our listeners might find interesting is do you would you go for a hiking shoe on a fast pack given that a part of it will be hiking or would you still be relying on your trail running shoe when you're going um fast packing 
I think that's cool. I'll, I'll, as always, throw in my opinion, and then Nicolette <laughs> can give her opinion. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's a, it's a question where if you asked me that like a couple of years ago, I would just uh, go, no, man, just use your trail running shoes. It's much better. Yeah. It's faster. They, you know, if they get wet, they dry overnight, and you don't have like wet feet the next day. But as I've been exploring it more and more and more, um, yeah, my opinion has slightly changed. I'll still probably always go for a trail running shoe. If it's like me and Nicolette, we're doing big days out. Like a trail running shoe is just much lighter and you move much more efficiently in it. And like I said, if it gets wet, it dries nicely. So, but then doing say like winter trips where there's snow present, um, I've had my trail running shoes been cut to pieces and you know sliced by the snow so then and your feet gets really cold where there may be more of a hybrid shoe will work very well because you have a bit more protection so there you can have a shoe that's got just like Gore-Tex protection and you can try keep it dry um, it'll keep your feet much warmer it's maybe got a thicker like I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of cushioning but sometimes the cushioning merely helps in isolating your feet from the ground so that cold doesn't come through and your feet stays warmer for longer. Mm. And in that way, you know, your feet are safer. Mm. So I'm not the biggest fan of like hiking boots and stuff, but I've got a really comfortable pair of those Vivo barefoot leather boots mm. and they're very, um, they're very light. They only weigh like 350 grams a pair. So it's only like a hundred grams or 50 grams heavier than some trail running shoes. Um, and they are very comfortable. So that's kind of, I still try to keep it very lightweight, but I don't, yeah, I don't always think the lightest is best anymore. Um, but if you look at Salomon, Scarpa, all those brands are bringing out, you know, a lot of the adventure racing shoes, I guess, is exactly that already. It's a hybrid between a trail runner and a hiking boot. So it's out there. You just need to go fit them and see what works for you. Unfortunately, they are very expensive and you can't just, you know, have a shoe for everything. So sometimes you just have to make do with what you have. Um, but yeah. Next, what do you? What's your advice on shoes for something like a a fast DGT? Yeah, it's a difficult question, but I think at the end of the day, it's it's quite individual. Like most things, you know, nutrition, um, training, it really just depends on the individual. And what I would like to say is, you know, don't get too caught up on feeling like you don't have the right gear to go out and do a fast packing mission. If you have trail shoes take your trail shoes. If you have hiking boots, you can make do with those. But until you get out there and actually experience the terrain that you're going to move on, um, ha moving with your pack, your weight, everything that's specific to you, you won't actually know what your best options are. So don't be afraid to say, this is what I've got and I'm going to give it a go. Um, you know, send us a message, book a trip with us, We'll teach you everything we know and only through that personal experience will you start to understand your specific needs and requirements for something like a DGT or just moving in the mountains for a couple of days. Oh, thanks. Yeah, oh, thanks for that share. Um, that's, I think that's a really good point to to maybe conclude today's chat on fast packing. Um, that was very informative and I'm really glad we had this chat before before I attend my my weekly round, which <laughs> I really look forward to. Um, yeah, we'll be we'll be following on that. You'll need to send us a tracking <laughs> link. <laughs> well, I'm glad you say that hiking shoes are acceptable because I was thinking I also have those uh, Vivo barefoot shoes, and I, there was like I was in I was almost like leaning, or I am still leaning more towards those to to try and run with. So so I'm, I'm glad I won't be judged. If you see a photo of me with my hiking boots. <laughs> um, no, those boots look epic. I huh? wish I had a pair. <laughs> Part of the reason yeah. I say just go with your trail shoes is that's also all I have. So, yeah, um, yeah we just make do and maybe one day invest in something a little more luxurious. <laughs> yeah. So, um, just a, a last uh, thing from Gegrond side, we just quickly want to mention just two things. Uh, one, if you want a Gegrond cappuccino, we are really lucky that we have a little bit of a footprint at the Dean Brewery. That's there close to Silver Lakes. So if, you, if you're if ever in the, in the area, come and say 
high and have a lack a cup of gegrond coffee and then also there's a really good event coming up it's the coffee expo or specialty coffee expo which runs from the 26th of august until the 28th uh, at four ways mall so uh, we'll also be serving you some great cappuccinos and it's actually really nice there's a lot of well-known roasteries that are also going to serve some cappuccinos there as well um so it should be a good day out um so yeah hopefully we'll see some of you out there and um yeah so thanks for thanks for today's discussion as always it's been really informative so <laughs> Peter, can i just jump in there with yeah. regards to the um gegrond at hazeldean and at um the four ways at that specialty coffee um kind of expo i guess um mm. For the, it's the first time I've ever heard, hear you say the word cappuccino so much. Uh, will there be other methods? <laughs> will there be different methods of brewing um, happening there? So at the specialty coffee conference or expo, will you be able to get like a V60 or a um, you know a mocha pot or something different like that? Um, so we will mainly focus on milk-based drinks. Um, so that will be the main focus, but using but using specialty coffee. So it's going to be. It's going to be something a bit more unique than you might be getting at other coffee shops. So the intention of it is to use those premium beans to make your flat whites or your milk-based drinks. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be predominantly milk-based drinks. <laughs> okay, no, that's great. Because um, you know, myself and Nicolette, like we, as much as I like to think I'm a very coffee purist and only drink black coffee, like um, no, we wake up in the morning and have a proper cappuccino. So, and I think a lot of runners really love that little like heartwarming bit of milk in the coffee. Um, so no, I'm very very excited for that. And like, look, I'll see if I can pop around to the to the expo there at Four Ways Mall because that's not too far from where we are actually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so thanks so much. So thanks so much for sharing that. And um, yeah, any last words, Nick? No, I think we've we've run our time and covered what we need to today. It's been really great. Thanks so much, guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Mm, thanks. <laughs> Cheers, Peter. Enjoy Cheers, uh, yeah. enjoy the <laughs> the last bit of summer and island there. <laughs> Chat later. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning into the Mountain Ground podcast. As always, please provide us your feedback. Um, this topic has been very cool for us to talk about. So if you do have any tips on fast packing or your opinion on it, please uh, direct message us. We always get nice um, feedback and we do enjoy engaging with any of uh, athletes or hikers, fellow adventurers and coffee addicts. So have a beautiful day further and uh, subscribe to listen to the next podcast.